Well, you know, there you go. There's that. And, and. <laughs> you can bring it with you. There you go. Thank you so much. As a Berwick resident, I'm sad that you're stepping off the board, but extremely happy that you're going to be involved in the town. So it's, yes. it'll be, yeah. I feel like we have the best vibe now. Just give me a call. <laughs> and it's an exciting time in Berwick. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So that'd be great. Yeah. And a street up. So 2018, 2021. Uh -huh. And chair during one of the most yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> tough times. So but pre mop for that. Thank you. So Joanne, I, we hope we have the right dates. Uh -huh. 2003 you began. I'll just try to do the math. <laughs> 21. Yeah. Uh, so this is an official part of the Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, oh, here. Here. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Good luck with all the new pieces. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah, we're ready for the public input statement. Okay. The first public input session is a 15 minute session with the person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public, public input is designated for district residents. So the board chair may grant not residents the opportunity to express under the law regarding executive sessions. For example, matters involving personnel cannot be made during public input, and you may leave your public input and click on the link at the top of the agenda. So should we start with in person? Yeah. I, Dan, you're here for public input? Yes, please do. Yeah. And I do have more than the public input from okay. outside. So my name is Jen Anglin, I live in North Berwick, and I have worked at Hamlet High School for over two decades now. And unfortunately, it was with great sadness that I resigned from the district this year. My decision to resign from Noel High School is based on two decisions our district made this year that offended my most basic values and left me feeling painfully and ethically compromised. Leadership's refusal to stand with the current best practices to address racism and inequity in our communities and leadership's decision to withhold the actual COVID graduation requirements from students and families. The later, in my opinion, was a decision that caused unnecessary damage, stress, and anxiety to our most marginalized, disenfranchised, and hurting students and families. It was painful to lack the ability to assure struggling seniors a week before graduation that they had met the standards under COVID and were going to make it. The first, quite simply and painfully, shows that our district is currently failing to find the courage or ethics to stand on the right side of history in the midst of a civil rights movement in this country. Leadership's refusal to publicly support, endorse, or mandate the main Department of Education's equity statement has left me dumbfounded. It is beyond my moral comprehension. On December 11, 2020, the main Department of Education, along with other educational organizations, released a statement declaring a commitment and support for diversity, equity, and inclusion in Maine schools, and I quote, we proudly and steadfastly support the educators and districts in Maine who are taking on the work of understanding and dismantling racism and inequity in our schools and communities. We urge all Maine schools and educators to accept their role and responsibilities in examining and addressing the inequities that have long existed in our society and institutions. Over a year and a half has passed since this statement was released and leadership has refused to heed the call. 
You have refused to release a statement to the community, ensuring every student, family, and teacher that our district is prepared to address issues of racism in our school. Your refusal is a clear and painfully disappointing one. I am dismayed by the lack of courage, vision, leadership, and humanity. Although I appreciate the letter sent to staff after school on Tuesday for a professional development plan for the next school year, this is quite simply not enough. Our district needs to endorse the statement. Over the past semester, I've witnessed other schools across Maine endorse it. Surrounding schools have also shown courage and leadership with the current racism and hatred our Asian Pacific population is facing in our country. Leadership was asked to release a statement in support of Asian Pacific Awareness Month in May. Surrounding schools did so, but alas, our school was again silent. We have an issue with racism and Confederate flags at Noble. Leadership's refusal to stand up against the blatant racism and hatred is heartbreaking. In 2021, our parking lots and our classrooms cannot include this dangerous and hateful symbol. But again, you refuse to address it. I was informed that in order for change to occur, students would have to come forward and share their concerns. I believe strongly that is unfair and unacceptable to ask students to lead this charge. I know firsthand how students of color are impacted when they walk into this building and have to pass Confederate flags in the parking lot. I have collected some of their stories in writing, but I will not ask a young adult to confront this hate personally. This is unfair and unethical. Violation, you are making space for racism in our schools and your silence caters to an incredibly small faction of the community. During my decades in this district, I've had profound experiences working with young adults and bearing witness to the truth that when they know better, they do better. I believe in this community, our students are extraordinary and they are capable of true greatness. Leadership's quiet refusal to acknowledge these historic and essential issues is unacceptable. The equity coach recently hired to assist with this work has already asked leadership to endorse the DOE statement months ago, but you refuse. By choosing silence and asking for more time, I fear our school is falling painfully short. Our schools currently need and deserve leadership who possess the courage and vision required to ensure we create and foster schools based on our highest ideals. With all due respect, your silence is hurting students of color in our schools. Your silence is hurting our entire school community. I cannot be a part of a system that refuses to heed the call of history to do the hard work and navigate the challenging conversation that ensure we are sincerely dedicated to creating just, equitable and inclusive schools, classrooms and communities. If you lack the ethics or courage to provide the leadership we need, then I humbly, on behalf of the students I love and respect so very much, beg you to reconsider your ability to effectively serve our community in this time. It has been a sincere honor, joy, and privilege to work at Noble High School over the past two decades. I plan to complete my career here, and I could not love the Multiple Pathways program more. But I cannot continue to work within a system that refuses to address the most pressing issues of our time. And it sincerely breaks my heart. I stand here today because I care about this school and the young minds who look to us for guidance, wisdom, and support as they navigate this very complex world. I have always prided myself on my dedication to honesty and ethics in my work with students. In order to maintain a sense of integrity in my work, I am forced to resign from this district. I do not appear before this board to cause damage or humiliation. I am here to ask leadership to provide stronger courage and vision as we move forward in the 2021-2022 school year. Our students are depending on you. Thank you very much. Thank you. John, would you, would you mind emailing those? There were just a couple of things at the beginning that I couldn't hear, and I would love to read your comments. Yes, I do. So we do have another piece of public input. Uh, this is from Shannon McGrain, I believe, M-A-G-R-E-N-D, -E from Berwick. <clears throat> I have seen a Confederate flag around town and have recently found out that the Confederate flag is not banned in our public schools. I am ready to share my discomfort and outrage on this point. There is no reason the Confederate flag should be allowed to be flown anywhere in our town, especially in our school, where our children's views on the world are being shaped. The flag represents a disappointing and hateful time in our country's history. Our other states, towns, and organizations have banned the Confederate flag. State of New York, U.S. Marine Corps, U.S. Navy. And it is unacceptable that our town and school systems are still allowing the symbol of slavery to fly. I have spoken to other community members, parents, and teachers in our community who agree. I plead you to ban the Confederate flag from South 60s Berwick Area School District for the sake of our children and diversity inclusion in our community. 
That's uh, the other piece that's, that's in there at this point. I'd like to see this topic on a future agenda for discussion. I'm not liking what I'm hearing that I was not aware of. Uh, I, fair enough. We can have lots of conversations about that for sure. It's on our, it's on the radar. And um, when we do a little piece under other tonight, we'll just kind of update you on what we have been working on. And we'll go for that. Was there any other public input? All right. Um, new board members. Right. How does this go? Here? What? Well, they've already said. Victoria's here. Yeah. 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 Let's see. We were hoping to have you come in before uh, the board meeting, but that did not work. So we'll catch up. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. So we do have the oath of office. Are you ready to? Be official? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Let me just grab that. Okay. Yeah. Does Denise do this or Denise? Denise, 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 so I just read it and like away now and yes. show the Travers. Travers. Okay. So I, Victoria Travers. I, Victoria Travers. Do swear that I will faithfully discharge to the best of my abilities. Swear that I will faithfully discharge to the best of my abilities. The duties incumbent on me as a regional unit board director of. Are you not eleven? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, to the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. The duties incumbent on me. The duties incumbent on me. As a regional school unit board director of Lebanon. As a regional. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm MS 8060, so okay. Okay. <laughs> as a regional school unit. As a regional school unit. Board director. Board director. Of MS 8060. MS according to the Constitution of Maine. According to the Constitution of Maine. And laws of this state, so okay. help me God. And laws of this state, so help me God. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> you can join the table. Can we take a table? Yeah. We don't have your name tag yet. Oh, that's okay. That okay. That oh, that's of course. Yeah. I mean, of course not. <laughs> you, you can sit. I realize that I answered that backwards. I totally understood what you said. <laughs> so, Victoria, we can do official um, introductions now, just so you. Excellent. Know. Thank you. Do you want to start I'm Lynn Manley. I represent North Berwick, and I've been on. Uh, Six years, seven years, I think. So, going around? Yes. Uh, I'm Nancy Newbert, also from Lebanon, and I've been on five years. Hmm. Uh, Denise Mallet from Berwick, and I've been on the board for four years. And I'm Audra Bowie, the superintendent. Sue Austin, the assistant superintendent. Stephanie Hagenbu, Lebanon, uh, just in a year. Oh, I'll introduce myself. Victoria Travers, and I've been here for what, two minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I represent them. And we have Rebecca. Rebecca. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm from North Berwick, and I think it's been five years. <laughs> I forget. At least five years. Awesome. And we're missing um, Travis Ryan, who is from Berwick, and our new board rep from North Berwick is Kate Leyland, so we're hoping that she'll. Field the next meeting. And we have a seat open right now because Linda left us. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. I'm, I'm thinking they're meeting next week, I think, that's the point to Yeah, Tuesday, yeah. Perfect. Victoria, we'll uh, meet. We usually do the meeting before this meeting, so you kind of get the lay of the land, but we'll we'll catch up okay. and go okay. through the process again. So All right. Thank you. Nice to have you. You too. Um, do we want to do the new chair and vice chair? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, can I nominate? You can. Um, um, or no, somebody else can. should? Somebody else should probably. Okay. 
Would somebody like to nominate me? <laughs> 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 She's there, and we're Rebecca Hopper as vice chair. I will nominate next is Jer on the back of his wife, Jer. All right. Well said. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that. We just do a vote. Yeah. All in favor? Rebecca, did you hear? Are you are we yeah. back? Vote for yourself? Or, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So today's You're a Free Woman. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. So now we have an Excel student presentation. We do. Griffin, you ready? Yes, I am. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So my name is Griffin Ivy, and I'm in fifth grade. I currently go to the middle school, and. For my Excel project, we were going to try and help solve a world, real world problem. So this is my presentation. Ooh. Confederate flag in schools. Origin of the Confederate flag. The Confederacy had three battle flags in their history. The modern one was made in 1885 and is the one you see today. The Confederacy changed them because they were flaws. One looked like a surrender flag a little bit in the wind. This is how the Confederate flag came into the scene during the Civil War, which was started over the owning of humans. How the Confederate flag came back. The Confederate flag kind of disappeared until around the 1920s when the KKK revived it and made it more popular. The KKK uses the symbol at their meetings and rallies. The Confederate flag boosted during important civil rights moments such as desegregation. Confederate statues and monuments also skyrocketed during the 20s, but also went up in the 60s. Explanation of slide ahead. At certain times in American history, the Confederate flag was flown more. Confederate was flown more. Confederate monuments were erected and schools were named after Confederate soldiers and leaders to scare and intimidate people of color to include children in desegregating schools. As the graph shows, some of these times include during Plessy v. Ferguson, when the Supreme Court justified separate but equal spaces even though separate is not equal. Explanation continued. Other times include in 1909 when the NAACP was founded or the National Association for the Advance Advancement of Colored People they really just fight for equal rights, treatment, and economical fairness for all people of color. Another time is when Ruby Bridges, a black child, integrated in an all-white school. In the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which was just saying no matter what race, sex, religion, or national origin you are, you have equal rights and can't be discriminated against. So you can see Plessy v. Ferguson right here was in 1896, and then it really, really boosted when the NAACP was founded. Those are just a few of the ones that are on here. Okay. Can, I, can I jump in for a second, Griffin? Yeah. Um, I'll have Griffin send us this okay. so I can put it in the notes of the, of the minutes as well so people can look at it because he... That one in particular is a pretty cool yeah, one. Yeah, that's yeah. Really yeah. That one. All right, sorry, Griffin. <laughs> Confederate flag today. The Confederate flag means hate and pain. Today, people fly it to counter BLM protests. It can be hurtful and open wounds of stories people have heard about their ancestors. It can also make people feel afraid because the flag symbolizes violence. In April, I surveyed administrators at the middle school and at the high school regarding the Confederate flag at Noble. Four administrators responded. The thoughts on the topics that I introduced are in the following slides. What have you seen regarding this symbol in your schools? Student profile pictures, and yes, on a couple of occasions this year, we have seen this on our campus. Do you know what this symbol represents? We have two yeses. 
and the symbol came out in the 1860s as a flag of the Confederacy. In more recent years, the flag has come to represent a mix of beliefs. For many, the flag is a symbol of slavery and racist ideals. For some others, the Confederate flag mean, represents Southern pride, and there are a few that are confused about its meaning. This one is also pretty much the same. So, what is the district's response to this symbol? Aggressive if it becomes a distraction to the learning. We respond quickly when we hear of this symbol being displayed on the school grounds. We meet with the student and explain how it affects others that, and that it has no place in the school. This has been very successful so far, but I wish we could do more. When a student is seen wearing or displaying the flag, they are asked by a staff member or administrator to remove it. Throughout this year, students have been willing to comply. <clears throat> are you aware of any policies regarding the Confederate flag in your schools? Three said yes. One said there is nothing specific regarding that symbol, but we do have harassment and bullying policies that can be applied depending on the circumstances. For any standing curriculum on the topic of the Confederate flag, two said yes, one said not sure, and one said it does come up in classroom discussions. If so, what is student's response, student response? If not, do you think students would accept curriculum about it? I think students would welcome discussions regarding the history of the flag and the impact it has on students of color. I know high school students are taught about the Civil War and the concept of slavery. There are units throughout grades 8 to 12 that hit on that topic of the civil rights. All students are required to take courses offered by the Social Studies Department that cover these topics. Confederate flag in schools. The Confederate flag should be banned on school grounds. In the student code, it states, My words and actions show respect to myself and others. My words and actions show tolerance for people whose appearance, beliefs, and values are different than mine. My words and actions create a safe environment for myself and others. These are the reasons why the Confederate flag should not be in schools. Dress code, any offensive, alarming, or disruptive clothing. My whole point in this. Someone in my brother's grade wore a sweatshirt with a flag, and my brother asked him if he knew what it meant, and the kid said no. My brother explained it to him, and he went, I never knew that is what it meant. My point in all of this presentation is that I believe the Confederate flag should be banned on school grounds. I think there should be more awareness regarding curriculum. I believe we need policy around the Confederate flag. Students should not be allowed to bring or wear anything with the Confederate flag to school property. I think the curriculum we need, we need needs to be before the high school level. I think we should start incorporating it at 5th grade through 8th grade. And then, like, up into high school. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for viewing my presentation and taking notice of what I'm doing and trying to do. I want our schools to be a safe and happy place for everyone. I'm trying to raise awareness about why the Confederate flag can be hurtful to people and could make people feel not welcome or afraid. Thank you again for your time. Thank you, Griffin. Thank you. 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 I don't think so, no. <laughs> I guess I guess not. No, I think uh, Griffin just did an incredible job, and uh, I do have to say that he really, really put a lot of thought into this. Uh, he really came from. He, he had to switch a couple of times, you know, what he was thinking that he was going to do uh, for his actual project, and but he the whole time, right from the beginning up until this point really wanted to allow for tolerance of people's beliefs so he didn't want to uh you know continue with a bullying type of viewpoint like please do this or you should do that he more just wants awareness so i think he did a great job you know explaining everything and uh thank you for taking time to listen to him tonight cool. thank you griffin how long did it take yeah. you to work on your project this took me about I think like five or six months, I would say. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Right. So Griffin reached out to me. Let me look, Griffin. 
Huh. We have a lot of emails back and forth. Yeah, 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 I'm going to put it. So, yeah, Griffin, can you email me your updated? I think I have everything except the last two slides that you have just recently done. Um, but yeah, we've been meeting since, I feel like it's been since the beginning of the year. Like you guys, you and Ms. Tim kind of created your project and then he's been coming back and forth with me about how to present this going forward. Um, so, yeah, it's been a while. Thank you. That was quite excellent. Yeah. Um, and I do think, folks, this is, you know, as Jen shared tonight, her, her concerns, um, it's a very complicated conversation. And I, when, I, when Griffin said to me, that's my goal, I want to be on the Confederate flag, I'm like, I am not, I am supportive of you. It will take us a while to actually move through the process because it's a it's a big controversial situation that we need to work through in our community, and it's it's um, it's worth addressing. But it is definitely um, it's tough stuff. So we will we will be looking at this for the like time going forward. I told Griffin by the time you get out of here, buddy, <laughs> we'll be we'll be moving forward. So it's it's good. All right. I think you're all set, Griffin. Okay. Go finish your, finish your tour of the South. Where are you guys today? We're in New Orleans, actually, right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Bye. You can stay on and watch the rest of the board meeting if you want, but you don't have to. <laughs> all right. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Okay, so there we have financial summary. Um, the subsidy. Oh, and this, oh, this, this is just a regular financial summary. I'm going to come and sit here. We have a staff, but this is the motion. Oh, yeah. This is the way to look at that. All right. Victoria, this is Denise Van Campen, our business manager. Thank you, Linda. So, we are talking, the last meeting, we had a conversation about um, the governor's proposal to bring school funding to 55% and the additional subsidy that would result from that for our district. Um, in the week since we met, I have been in touch with our attorney, Bill Stockmeyer, and um, I just want to give you some information that he and I had been talking about. So the, the thing is, the, the proposal is not yet through the legislature. I think they thought it was going to go more quickly. Um, there is actually, in the Bangor Daily News, there's an article about this topic, if anybody wanted to, to go look that up. But it looks like the legislature is adjourning without any resolution on this particular topic. Um, in conversations that he's had with MSMA, he thinks they'll adjourn and come back in July for some conversations. But as of right now, it's not through the through the budget process, through the legislative process. Um, also, Bill wanted to point out that um, when the budget was passed. It was passed uh, by one party with a simple majority. Um, that meant the original budget was not negotiated. There was no coming together to agree on a budget. This supplemental budget needs a two thirds vote. So it may or may not come to pass. So I think um, I would recommend that that makes our decision for us. We are not guaranteed to get this extra money. Um, so I think we should sign these assessment warrants without considering that additional subsidy. Um, so that you puts the three options that we had basically aside. Uh, yeah, correct. Until we, yeah, okay. Unless there's some future development, at which point we can discuss it. Okay. Probably, um, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So um, what I have for you, it leads into the signing of the warrants. There needs to be a motion to accept, and, and Audra has the wording on that. And then before you leave the meeting, if you could sign, um, almost like you do when you call the, the budget meetings and those things, we'll have you um, gather and sign on your way out 
um, so that we can give the towns their assessments tomorrow. And you need to sign on the same line. Yes, it's a similar thing where if you sign on the top left line, sign the top left line for every every piece of paper. And uh, you'll get hand cramps, but I'll be there with you. So do we, are we doing a financial summary as well? After, after this. Oh. Okay, do you want me to read the motion? Okay, this is the motion. Or does a board member have to make the motion? Yes. I bet. I'll do it, okay. <laughs> I move that the warrant for assessment of tax and the assessment schedule and notice of installments for each member municipality prepared by the treasurer for fiscal year July 1, 2021 to June 30, 2022 be approved and be issued in form presented to this meeting and that the treasurer be authorized and directed to deliver to each member of the municipality its warrant for assessment of tax and its assessment schedule and notice of installments. I have a second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. And so um, that cover sheet, Andre, you'll need to yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So we, so we'll be, we'll go at the end because signing is there. Correct. Right. We can sign. We don't want to. We don't have to take up everybody's time watching us sign. I guess we'll just do it at the end of the okay. meeting. Um, and. Um, Thank you. Thank you for that. And again, if I hear anything else or new developments come, we can have that conversation again. Um, the next item, item nine, is the financial summary for May. Um, you should all have it attached to your agenda, but I will also share my screen. Uh, There we are. <laughs> I think we can see that. <laughs> and, well, it's on your agenda. So it's it's much easier. Easier. Yeah, it's just for people watching out there. So this is the financial summary through May 31st of 21. Um, you can see that um, we are pretty much right on track. The state subsidy and the local revenue um, have an 8% remaining, which is the month of June. That corresponds to the fiscal year you see down below shows 8% remaining. That just means that the federal subsidy is coming in on schedule as are the payments by the towns. Um, other revenue is slower to come in and comes in at all various points. So we've collected some and we're still waiting on, on others. Um, as far as expenses go, I think we have healthy remaining balances with the exception of system administration uh, we currently have um, an over an overage of twenty six thousand four hundred seventeen dollars. That is largely due in part to sixty eight thousand dollars of unbudgeted required payments um, for um, uh, some. I don't know how to phrase this. I guess the overage in the yeah they are they are required. Um, legal yeah, payments, legal payments that, we, that we must make um, and they happen to be have to co be coded in this area um, they are for the benefit of students yeah. but due to the arrangements and how things are they have to fall under system administration coding wise so was that stuff that was not budgeted correct yeah. it has been budgeted for next <laughs> but this year was so we take it out of fund balance or whatever. So um, at the last, I don't know if it was the last meeting or the meeting before, um, most years uh, the board approves a 5% budget transfer between articles, which means if you have an overage in one and under in another, you can move up to 5% to cover that. So this will fall well beneath okay. those guidelines. Any other questions? Good. 
So we're gonna sign the warrants at the end, right? We're gonna sign the warrants at the so end. So we're going down to number 10. I'm going to just say, I would really like our superintendent to continue. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody makes it. Oh, that makes a motion. I got this one. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Just put it out. I like your version. I got it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion to renew the superintendent's contract um, with the planned 3% salary inclusion for 2021. And the uh, renewal would then extend the contract through 2024. Is that correct? I'm talking 21 22. The 3% yeah. is for 21 22. 21 22. Yeah. yeah. Second. Okay. okay. All in favor? Okay. Um, summer board meeting survey. Okay. Jen. Um, has sent this out, the survey, just for the July dates. She sent it out a few weeks ago, but because we have new board members, she's sending it back out. So we'll just okay. be on the lookout for that. Um, has a, we'll get the, we'll get the email the outbox again. So she sent it out today? She sent it out a couple months ago. Yeah, she's I sending it back out just with our new board like member. Tomorrow, she just yeah. sent it. And did it, she just send it? Yeah, okay. okay. Not to be a nudge, but oh, we need the responses back because we have to schedule the, the, the folks that are coming to the retreat who are going to do our PD time. We just need to get it. Paid. So just respond as soon as you can if we could. Thank you. Uh, next we have the donation. Okay. So we have a backpack donation, backpack program donation of $1,300 from a student who is an elementary age student. Her name, her first name is Megan, and she, I can send this to you around so you can look at it. She um, rode her bike 60 miles with her father following her to collect food and donations for the backpack program. So here's just a little picture of that. Very awesome. So we think of, we thank Megan and her parents. So how does the the, the, the don't you get a lot of donations to the backpack? Is it is it enough to keep it afloat? Or yeah, it's, um, or do we, well, we're constantly. The, the nice thing is it's a, been a very um, consistent level of donation. People really have found it to be. Similar to, we also have the um, clothing closet, the American Academy. So there's a regular consistent delivery system. People are donating regularly. And then if we get a little bit like, oh, we're really going on certain things, we'll put it out. Facebook is a wonderful place to do that. And people make a donation free for this. Yeah. This was, is just pretty significant because it was yeah. one child <laughs> biking 60 miles <laughs> and gathering up $1,300 worth of food and donations. Yeah, and donations. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but I think we do need an approval of that. Oh, we yes. do. Oh, so if you'd like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve <laughs> the $1,300 donation. Um, and Megan Dumont. Um, and a big thank you with that. I'll second. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay. No error. Mobile High School Assistant Principal. Okay, so we are um, nominating Jim or James Winslow as the Assistant Principal um, for the eighth grade of the Multiple Pathways Program. This position has um, was vacated last year and not filled based on the fact that we had a hybrid model um, and our full student body is not in. So currently, um, he, um, Jim is a current PE health outdoor education teacher for us here at Noble. He's been with us since 2018. Um, the interview committee uh, was very impressed with his skill set and um, has a lot to be able to bring um, to the, the two teams. He's currently working closely with the multiple pathways students. He knows a lot of our eighth grade students going into eighth grade and um, multiple pathway students, so it'll be a really nice 
um, just a nice transition for for him for this position and for us for this position. So if he primarily will work in the eighth grade, grade and multiple pathways. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we need a lot of that, I assume. Too. Yes. Yes. Motion. I'll make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of time. They're all packed up. To, um, uh, appoint James Winslow to be the um, assistant principal of the high school. All right. Is that yeah? That's yeah. Right. yeah. Eighth grade and we'll Eighth grade. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's okay. I'll second it. All those right. favor. Okay, she has a whole lot of I do, I do, which has been busy. <laughs> Some of us are out of order, but I, I have them all here. So the first one, first, um, so these are our nominations for positions for the 2021-22 school year, um, pending your approval. So we have Michael Hallinan, who is currently a teacher at uh, Trailside Middle School in Ashland, Virginia. He and um, his wife are relocating to this area. And uh, he taught, he was currently teaching English. He is being nominated for our high school English position here. We have Shannon Jenkins, who is currently a teacher, um, ESLO lead teacher in Atlanta, Georgia. She is going to, well, she's nominated to teach French for us. She has a great deal of experience teaching French K-12. She's done um, English as a second language, ELL. She has a wide variety um, and a, a big, huge skill set. Uh, so that's that nomination. We have Kailani Andre, um, Anderson Andre for Huzzy third grade. She um, is finishing up a one-year position in Buxton as a teacher. She was doing um, th that remote, you know, how we added teachers here, she did the same thing there. Prior to that, she was at Buxton as an ed tech for literacy math. And then we have Jesse Colin Young. Let me just check that one out. And Jesse is for the PE teacher at Huzzy School. Yep. Um, Jesse is currently um, teaching at Attleboro Public Schools in Massachusetts, and he is going to be returning to this area. He graduated from Marshall, so he's coming back up to Maine. Um, so that's that. And then we have Erin Olson, who um, we are nominating for Lebanon grade four. She is currently the remote teacher um, in the Wyndham Raymond area. Um, and she worked, she, that was this year and prior to that, she was the intern there as well. We have Rebecca Cosgrove for third grade for Lebanon. And Rebecca um, has been on ed tech at Huzzy School. She had a long-term subposition in Lebanon last year, and she's doing arts and remote teaching this year for us with our remote K-5 students. We have Sarah Millett, who we're nominating for English Language Arts at the middle school. She's currently the social studies teacher for sixth and seventh grade on the remote team. Prior to that, she worked as an ed tech um, special education at Noble and at Hussey, Noble Middle School and at Hussey. Then we have Abigail Ackley, who is being nominated for Noble Middle School Math. She is finishing up a year of math right now in the building. It was a one year only position as somebody went to um, remote on the math department and she took that place for the one year and we've had a position open, so that is um, for her. She has done her student teaching at Wyndham and Raymond, as well as somebody else. So those are our, I don't think I, let me just see. I think I got them all. Is it okay. So we want a motion for that bunch? Put of the whole bunch. Yes, please. I have a motion we accept uh, everyone on your set. I have to get rid of them all. I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. The next one, the sure, I'll go through the resignations now. So Mark Bisson, who is our half-time assistant principal, half-time literacy coach in North Berwick, um, applied for and was appointed um, the full-time 
assistant principal at the Margaret Chase Smith. Is it yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. 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 Tracy yeah. Allison. Yeah. Tracy yeah. Allison is the principal. He will yeah. take over the assistant. Yeah, yeah. we're going to go get Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all right. I think we've taken some of them. That's right. I think we're right. That's right. Um, and then Jennifer England um, read to you her resignation letter. Um, so that's from multiple pathways, Jen's from multiple pathways. Kelly McGlynn, who is a special education teacher going into a different field. Um, Jordan Larrabee, who is currently in Noble Middle School, special education she's teacher. She's going to Stanford, which is her hometown, yeah. um, and her family is there. So that will be a nice uh, transition for her family. Uh, Megan Lyon, who is at Hussey School Kindergarten. This is she's finishing up her second year here. Um, she, um, her brother and her sister, are in Michigan. They're moving her parents to Michigan, and she and her husband, soon to be husband, are going to be relocating to Michigan with her family as well. So those are our resignations. We, we have do a separate you say that Tracy Hyatt guidance secretary. Oh yes, we don't need an action on that, but thank you, Tracy Hyatt, Noble High School guidance secretary. Yes, thank you. All right, so we'd like to make a motion for that. I make a motion. We accept the resignations. <laughs> a second. Second. All those in favor? Good. Okay. And we have one leave of absence request that didn't make it on the agenda. It, it, um, um, and Heather Leviolet from Lebanon uh, is, a kid, is a kindergarten, current kindergarten teacher, I believe it is, right? Yes. It's a job share position, and she is asking for a leave of absence. Um, our window for the leave of absence is March 1st, uh, so this is coming in a few months late. Um, so that is Heather. So she's not filling the space, right? There. I can certainly read if you want me to read what it what it is. Sure. Okay. I am writing this letter to request a leave of absence for the 2021-2022 school year. My current job share position has been eliminated, and I cannot fulfill a full-time schedule at this moment. I have small children at home and an incoming kindergartner. I'm looking forward to substitute teaching at my daughter's school in Berwick and, and taking care of my son. So it, we vote to either approve or not that right. leave of absence, and then you guys take care of whatever the application sure. process yes. is. Yes. Do we have any discussion? Questions? My only concern is that if there that sets a precedent for I know, changing the deadline. But I mean, it's not like she missed it a lot. Yeah, she missed it by three months. So, and so, I mean, you've been doing it interviews and so forth. You think you can find a candidate at this point to even start a school to fulfill that if she doesn't come back at all? I think we would be able to do so. Yes. Yeah. I think it's too far past. Do we have to do okay. anything if we're not? Um, the process? No, I think that if you don't don't make the motion to approve it, then you just don't make it the motion. Yeah. Does that make sense over there? Am I? Yeah. We're, we're processing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if something changes in your brain, let us know. Yeah. We don't want to do. We don't want to do it wrong. We just want to make sure. That... Oh, so that I do well, my hope would just be that she's able to return when she able. Mm -hmm. She absolutely can. Like, like the position will be filled, but there will always more. Always more <laughs> positions <laughs> filled already, I believe. Yeah. We have one other um, employment um, piece before we move on to the next part, the next agenda item. Um, we have um, talked a little uh, bit about the high school principal update. And search update and um, at this point we would like to talk about and um, nominate AJ Dufort as interim um, principal. We've asked AJ to kind of come in here and just say a few words and kind of give us a background on a AJ background on your experience. Sure. <laughs> Thanks for coming AJ. Yes, no problem. <laughs> 
so yeah, just a little bit um, uh, sort of about me. So I have been 21 years in education, um, which really hits home when I you hear a former student, you know, nominated for a position. Like, wow, that, that wasn't that long ago, but apparently it was. Um, so of those 21 years, I've been very fortunate that 17 of those years have been able to be here at Noble High School as a teacher. I was a math teacher for 14 years, able to be a coach, and then um, an administrator as well. So. Um, in the middle of that time, I did leave for four years, um, had an opportunity to be an assistant principal and then a principal at Wells Junior High School. Um, you know, I, I, I jokingly yet very truthfully talk about that I was able to sort of make there as noble as I could um, in my time. So that's something I'm very proud of. But when I had the opportunity to return, um, you know, although, you know, actual hometown where I grew up is, you know, 15 minutes away. As far as professionally goes, this has been my home. Um, this is where I started as a teacher. This will always be, um, you know, the school and the district that, that carries a lot, a lot of weight with me. So with that being said, I didn't, you know, upon this return, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. But as Audra described, we went through the process, spoke with her and Sue, spoke with Mr. Finley. Um, with his retirement. Um, this right now in, in talking to everyone feels like the way that I can best help the school. Um, and that is something that means a lot to me. So um, if there's a lot of other folks that feel that way, I feel confident in doing that, having been a building principal um, and done those duties that are required of that role. So I feel comfortable doing that. Um, and I think our high school's in a really good spot. Obviously, like everywhere else, we can always improve. We always strive to improve, but this is a this is a pretty great place. So certainly if you folks have any questions of me, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> so AJ, this would be for a year. Yes. And we would we we would post the position yep. in, like in April. Yeah. And absolutely. Go through the, go through the process. Yep. And that's something yeah. you know, Audrey, you and I have talked. That's something that's really important to me. Um, I want the best possible person to be here. If that's me, great, fantastic. If it's not, I'm okay with that too. Um, so that I think I, I want the process and everything to be super transparent. The the district, the students, our staff deserve that. So absolutely. Yeah. Any questions? All right. Discuss. Perfect. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll just repeat what I said earlier, not in public, but um, you know, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of fans amongst the students, and I can't speak for teachers, but as I was sharing with the board as a parent, um, you get first -hand, first hand feedback. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, you get two thumbs up, certainly. But I, I think the student body has a ton of respect for you Thank and you. Um, appreciates the work that both you, you know, that all of you guys have done. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um, I think you would have a lot of support. Yeah, no, thank you. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's another part that's very important. It will continue to be a team effort. I think it needs to be. It functions better that way, having those checks and balances. So I think you speak to that perfectly. It, it is a team effort and it will it would absolutely continue to be a team effort. Just one thing I would yeah. say that just looking over the past few sure. years, I hope that, and it's hard to find a balance between being out amongst the kids and being in your office and doing all that stuff mm -hmm. you do. But you know, I would just hope to keep touch with the kids and yeah, you know, absolutely. Well, and that's something. I mean, again, is it hard? Is it challenging? It one hundred percent is. Yeah. But that, I mean. For me personally, I will always be a teacher, like even in the role. One of the things I love about being in that assistant principal role is it's easier, you know, because you're always in classrooms, you're always in the hallway. So you're always, you know, I'm always able to help kids with math homework. Mm -hmm. um, but that is something that absolutely needs to stay because if it can't, I won't be able to continue in the role because I won't be happy kids, doing it. Like, yeah, the kids need to see. Yes. The interacting with kids. The yep, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Like that's that's the really good stuff. I forgot what we were going to do about this. Any moment? I would like to make a motion to <clears throat> not it, to recommend to to appoint to appoint as our interim. 
Do I need a, I don't know what your actual full name is. Roland. 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 AJ. You don't get that out of AJ, huh? That's a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> a one-year um, interim principal position at Noble High School. I'll second that. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor? Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have others? I have, I have a couple of others if they're ready to move on to that. Yeah. I, have, I, have, I just, I don't know if you're on to others or I just have, I have a couple of questions that we don't really have to do now, but I wanted to just kind of put them out there. Um, the, I would love sooner rather than later for somebody to give the board some information and guidance on the uh, LD677 um, bill that is um, the right to strike and binding arbitration for teachers. Okay. Okay. I hear strong things on different sides and um, I guess I would like to have a more holistic um, okay. sort of explanation and some background. That'd be something for the school. Well, no, I think they're voting on it. Oh, so, I don't know. Do you, do you guys know when is that? I'm not exactly sure. I think it's probably going to get lumped in with that July work. That would be my guess. It was. It was when? I, I'm thinking it's going to get lumped in with that July work. That's, That's what guess. I think. I don't. I think it's coming up pretty soon. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so we can I get some, we'll figure it yeah, out we can get yeah some I would just like some yeah. more yes it's definitely been something that obviously the uh, superintendents super have been thinking about and are you know ought not to pass kind of stuff so let's yeah get, let's get a better okay. matter for you yep. um and then, then super minor because i really don't like reading minutes but did we not have any minutes that we had to approve uh um, we I was behind last night. Okay, so they're all full, cool, but but Jen didn't want to send them out to you like yesterday. After That's right. So we'll catch up on that. Yeah, so you'll get caught up. Yep. Um, and I think that was my question. Do you guys have others? I just want I yeah. just wanted to talk about graduation. Oh, I heard it was awesome. It was amazing. It was. It was. We had full turnout except I think maybe two students were not there. Mm -hmm. um, just very, it just went out off without a hitch. Okay. Very, very excited students. Yeah. Thank, you know, just thanking us for- yeah, Every single one. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. great. It, it was great. Yeah. yeah. And Denise got to hand off and Travis got to hand off and it was smooth and- It was a beautiful day. Yeah. It was a, it was a beautiful day. Yeah. It was, the students were, seemed so happy to be there yeah. and um it was uh, my highlight was standing next to Allie and her microphone yeah <laughs> and watching her orchestrate like nobody's business yes and <laughs> it was that was impressive <laughs> when she's got the earpiece in and she's saying aj aj what are you doing over there <laughs> you get alex over where you know it's just like oh it's so your phones weren't working yeah alex oh first of all anyway it was it was great and then i will add on to that um and i already sent my thanks to you and to aj but the project graduation which was eight o'clock that night to six o'clock the next morning was apparently fabulous and it was um you know they had they just kept them going all night long and they had a magician they had a hypnotist they went bowling they you know had fireworks a bonfire i don't know what i'm forgetting and they watched the sunrise on Gold's beach and it was apparently just phenomenal and i think it was like we were just chatting out in the hall i think it was these students they didn't realize how badly they needed to come back together in person. Yeah. And it, it just sounded like it was everything just got returned, like from a kind of social standpoint. And um, and it, it just sounded like every kid enjoyed themselves. It felt very normal. Like yeah. the, the graduation itself was really very normal. It was um, the only thing we didn't do because it wasn't enough time was to have the kids 
do the marching practices, so they just walk. Well, some of them still swaggered in. It was good, you know. I think they would have swaggered anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good. But I bet, like they, they were trying to dance a little. Yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. Yeah, there was, all the cats were okay. Yeah. The cats were great. Yeah. And there were there were actually not many that were decorated. Yeah, maybe a little more. Yeah. But anyway, it was, it was you know kudos to you guys who yeah, orchestrated sure. all of it. But it was oh, that whole weekend was very 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 well done. Okay. And then Sue, could you? Um, I just want to do. I'm actually. I pulled Shannon Swagger in. So Shannon's on. She's not um, on video just because I called her at the last minute and said, Shannon, can you do a little overview? We just wanted to update you a little bit about the diversity and equity work that we actually are doing. Mm -hmm. right. And um, I want to acknowledge Jen and the fact that that she's frustrated. Um, I feel that there is the momentum. It's growing, but it's hard. And so I, I hear her frustration with the slowness, um, but it is, it's, it's a difficult piece that we're working through. And we were doing quite a bit, um, and we do quite a bit, like the other piece, and Shannon can talk about that if, uh, if she'd like to, but we work with all the different coordinators in the, dish, in the, in the surrounding communities. Everybody's really wrestling with this work to make sure that we do it well that we do it in a way that is respectful of all um and it's uh it, it's, a, it's unfortunately a little bit of a dance and i recognize jen's frustration with that i, I truly do i truly do jen do you want to just talk quickly about the like an overview we had a really awesome professional development day yesterday that i think the teacher folks can talk about too is to like how they re responded to that go Shannon. Yeah, sure. So, um, and I'll spare you guys. I'm already in my pajamas. So I wasn't prepared. <laughs> um, I just want to talk a little bit about this year. I mean, what a crazy year, right? Not only navigating a pandemic, but really navigating some critical work and foundational planning and how we're going to approach our diversity, equity, and inclusion work. So this year, some really amazing pockets of things things have already occurred. So for example, adult ed offered some great series of workshops. Um, we had a dedicated group of high school and middle school teachers meeting monthly um, to talk about this work. We had some civil rights groups at the elementary level. Our librarians across the district did a collection analysis. And I know that many of our uh, MS8060 staff participated in some DEI workshops that the Department of Education offered. And at the same time, while all of those like kind of isolated things were going on, we were really in the throes of foundational planning in creating a more comprehensive DEI framework for the district. What we didn't wanna do is start this year and offer just a hodgepodge of one-off trainings that weren't connected to our mission in terms of our DEI work, which is really just to ensure the success of every single MS8060 student. Uh, using equity and social justice as the framework to really further the goals of our district. I think if we were to just offer random trainings here and there without really thinking of a common thread, we wouldn't have a long lasting or sustainable impact, right? Like this work is complicated. Um, we're not just doing it this year. We, we want to make changes that are going to last. So. It's not that things weren't happening this year. Like I said, they were kind of happening in silos as we really spent time researching, um, reaching out to consultants who can help us guide us in this work and really coming up with a more um, district-wide collaborative plan for next year. So that work really kicked off yesterday. We had the Associate Vice President for Institutional Diversity and Equity from Keene State College came and spoke to our staff. They had um, an amazing presentation. You could just feel the passion. Um, she really put the work in context for everyone, why, why this work is important, um, and really try to get a common language for everyone. Um, so Dottie Morris, Dr. Dottie Morris kicked it off for us. We 
um, have had an administrative workshop already. We are partnered up with uh, Dottie's colleague, Mary Gannon, and she already did a two hour workshop for our administrative team. We have a workshop scheduled for the board. Um, we have another workshop scheduled for the administrative team and then a combination. Um, next year, we already have teacher workshop days uh, with a DEI focus. We have Cornelius Minor coming who wrote the text, We've Got This. Um, so he, on October 8th, he'll be here talking about equity in terms of what does that mean um, as, as a teacher? What does that mean in terms of instruction? Uh, we also have one Wednesday a month for our late start early release Wednesdays that will be dedicated to this continued DEI work where teachers will be able to work at, in departments and grade levels and really think about uh, their curriculum and their instructional practices in terms of this equity lens. Um, we are also gonna have a K-12 DEI committee. So we have representation from all buildings and all grade levels to really look at the culture and climate of the district as it relates to this work. Um, our administrative team and you as the board will continue to be involved in this work. Um, we have, I mean, there's just a lot planned. There's a lot that's already occurred. Um, we really are relying on our consultants. Um, they often say that this is a marathon and not a sprint. And um, they're really guiding us so that we do things thoughtfully and strategically with the goal of really, you know, enabling us to have long-term sustainable change. So I, I don't know what I'm forgetting. Soon, Audra, feel free to jump in. Yeah, and the reason I like, I was like, Shannon, <laughs> I just wanted to be able to, like, Shannon's been working hard on this with our team, and she is the, mo the, the best spokesperson in terms of really being able to cover the whole, um, the whole story that we're, that we're trying to, to, to present. So that's why I grabbed her in her jammies and said, please just use your voice, because your voice is clearer than my voice right now in that. So thank you, Shannon. Sure. Thank you. Brenna or Jamie, did you want to just touch base on yesterday or what you've been hearing? Or um, I think we received some, some good feedback from yesterday. There was much appreciation for the letter that you sent out the other day. Um, the association is going to continue to work in collaboration with the district and the MEA um, in regards to this work. Um, in addition, we have a member who is part of the DEI committee at the MEA, Christopher Jones. Um, so that's awesome. So we have somebody who's kind of sitting on that committee as well. Um, we're going to be, a, uh, we've been asked to be a part um, of the Mary Gagnon work that's going to happen this summer. So we're um, really excited to be a part of that and also to sit in on some of the committee work that's being done with the middle and high school teachers, um, the um, NAC. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are super excited to be a part of that as well. So um, again, we believe it's incredibly important and want to be very thoughtful about how we implement, you know, and move forward with everything and um, appreciate the uh, being looped into all the stuff that's happening. So. And can I just echo one thing that Sue mentioned earlier? I mean, I do meet monthly with curriculum directors across the state, in particular Southern Maine. And you know, there is a spectrum of where people are in this work. And by no means are we, you know, way behind. Um, there, are, there are districts behind us. There are districts at the same point. There are districts ahead of us. Um, we are all, the curriculum directors are really um, relying on each other to share tools and resources. Um, it's been a great opportunity to just hear what other people are doing, but I think across the state, people are in different places and um, really looking for guidance for during this important work. Thanks, Shannon. Okay. Yeah, anything else anybody has? What, do we have a next meeting? Well, that's, that's, <laughs> the, that's, that's, the, that's the next one. Oh, I just my Thank you. Stay away at my camp. <laughs> I'm 
Okay, well, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one thing I would ask, can we do it in summer, like every couple of weeks, maybe just have an update from you guys? Yes. What's yeah. going on? Yes. Then we'll come into it cold. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, especially with planning next year. Right. And mm -hmm. right. It's looking yeah. really good right yeah. now for planning for next year. It's right. looking like on July 1, they're allowing us to not be masked in school. Oh. Right. Oh. So, so that's we didn't have a mask. So there's, so there's, you know, and our hope is that going into, um, well, it's the fall that things will be normal. That's like whatever that normal. Is. You know, we, everybody's moving back to their regular buildings. We're going to start the year like the normal aspect of things. What kind um, of response did you get for the middle school academy? Uh, so we have 20 students signed up Great. Yep, for the virtual middle school. Very excited. Is that um, what you were looking Yeah, we're kind of, I mean, you know, you're always looking for a little more, but it's a, it, it reminds me so much of the Mary Hurt Academy. Like, we're going to start with this small yeah. group, and then we don't, I don't want to take students away from in person, but I do want to be an opportunity for students who um, are just more flexible in their, in their, yeah. Looking at their families are more have that more ability. I'd like to be able to welcome back some of our homeschool kiddos that have chosen to not be associated with school because of that flexibility. I think we can support students, you know, that, that have that um, ability. To it's kind of nice to be able to be a little more flexible. Mm -hmm. um, so, and we're just specifically focusing currently again. We did think about reaching out to fifth grade. We haven't really taken that. Like so it's six, seventh, and eighth. Seventh and eighth. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we'll keep you updated on it. Have we already hired teachers for that? Yeah, no. we did that mm, in April, actually, because we needed them to start working. They're all current uh, teachers. teachers for us, and so they're doing a little um, double time in their brains, but they're they're excited, so it's good. And then on Tuesday evening at six o'clock. Oh yeah, we have the presentation. Okay, that was my next. Yes, yes. yes. Six o'clock at Noble High School in the auditorium. The presentation on the three editions. This coming Tuesday. Yes, the twenty second. What? What? The construction. The construction. Yes. We sent out. We did. We have been sending things out. We sent out a lot. Lot yesterday. Um, so if you sent it to voicemail, <laughs> it didn't listen to it. I understand. It's six o'clock. Six. It, this yes. went out to the board, or it went out to everybody yesterday. Yeah. I think like four things went out yesterday. Not on purpose. On but. this thing? Yeah. Oh, not, on a, not on email? Did it go on email? Oh, no, no, I, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. All right, I'm off the list now. All right, you wouldn't be off the list. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Okay, make sure we get that out. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Um, the architects will be here showing the plans for all three editions. Um, and then the plan would be then to break out into each town to just do town specific plans and questions of that. That night or additionally? Additionally. Right. So we're going to do a global one on, the, on Tuesday and then yeah. we'll schedule yeah. individuals. And you said six o'clock? Six yeah. o'clock. And it's not here. Yeah, we'll do it right here again. We'll get that out. Yeah, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Chris just texted me to just a lot. Okay. Okay, so anything else? Okay, so I need to watch it. Can't be me this time. Uh, Jen just texted me, it's going out tomorrow. Okay. No, no, so maybe okay. maybe we kept it away because right, of that. Right. there are so many other ones going out. Uh, okay. All right. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All those in favor. So, um, Ms. Oh, we have to sign. Yeah, yeah you can't leave without signing. Ms. Mallet, you win the most motion for being Yeah. <laughs> That's right.